Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. My name is Natalia Moczulska and this is the news. 186 days of war in Ukraine. Yesterday, as a result of Russian shelling in the east and south of Ukraine, two people were killed and seven injured. Meanwhile, today in the occupied Novokhovka and the Kyrgyzstan Oblast, Ukrainian troops attacked the industrial plant where the headquarters of the Russian troops was located. As reported by the Interfax Ukraine agency, several missiles fell on the building and a fire broke out on the premises. Propagandists wrote that their anti-aircraft defense was effective. Meanwhile, in Novokhovka, the Russians received a large blow from the armed forces of Ukraine. Our people hit the headquarters where these bastards were stationed. In the Donetsk region, one inhabitant of Bakhmut was killed and two inhabitants of the village of Khrihorivka were injured and numerous towns in the Mykolaiv Oblast in the south of the country were also fired upon. On Saturday night, two districts of Zaporizhia were shelled, resulting in two people being injured by shards of glass. The situation in the Black Sea and the Azov Sea has not changed significantly, but there is still a risk that the enemy will use caliber-type naval maneuvering missiles against infrastructure located deep in the territory of Ukraine. We believe in the armed forces of Ukraine. We will win together. Glory to Ukraine. Meanwhile, yesterday, a large missile hit Kharkiv. Based on the fragments found in Pavlivsky Square, the Ukraine authorities determined that it was one of the missiles of the Soviet S-300 anti-aircraft system that did not reach the target. I don't understand what they were shooting at. If this is supposed to be a military facility, then I'm Gandhi. This is absurd. I have no decent words, only those that I don't want to say out loud. This is the flag of our country and our nation. It is a symbol that this is our city and Ukraine is our country. Everyone needs to know what that means to us. The flag will hang until we are victorious. Bomb attacks in Ukraine have become commonplace. The inhabitants of Orykhiv made an attempt yesterday to remove rubble from their homes. Last Wednesday, Russian forces bombed the city, damaging more than 20 houses. Although the situation has improved, the front 20 kilometers away poses a constant threat. This is my home. The roof broke off. The walls inside the house deformed. We're being punished, but we don't know what for. So far, volunteers from 55 countries and additional guerrilla groups have volunteered to fight on the side of Ukraine. The Chechen fighters who formed the Volunteer Combat Battalion remember the recent two Chechen wars in which, like in Ukraine, Russia was the aggressor. Partisans with the pro-Tokyo views dream of creating a republic independent of Russia. He will continue till we stop him. And all people in the world have to understand that it's not a question of Russia and Ukraine. It's not a question of Chechnya and uh, Russia. It's a question of the world and Russians. Unfortunately, today is the same situation as in 1941 or 1939. We don't have a choice. Ukrainian aviation is still equipped with fighters of Soviet production, including Su-27 and MiG-29 planes. The Ukrainian Air Force seized a significant number of stormtroopers after the collapse of the USSR. But for economic reasons, most of them were soon withdrawn and stored. The situation changed in 2014, when Ukraine began restoring preserved aircraft to active service in connection with the Russian invasion of Crimea. Russia hoped to exclude our air force from the fight in the first hours of a full-scale invasion. The enemy had an absolutely crazy plan, and their strategy consisted of many such crazy goals. Within six months, 18 of our pilots received the title of Heroes of Ukraine, and several dozen were awarded with state prizes. Their skills and combat results have become an absolute legend. I have heard praise for our airmen many times from representatives of our partners' armies. Whether Ukraine manages to fight off Russian aggression largely depends on the involvement of the West. So far, the United States has donated military equipment, the value of which is estimated at over 9 billion U.S. dollars, while Poland has provided Ukraine with support in the amount of over 7 billion złoty for military aid. Yesterday, Slovakia signed a deal under which fellow NATO states, the Czech Republic and Poland, will police its skies. As Bratislava withdraws its Soviet-made MiG-29s from service, potentially freeing up the old jets to send to Ukraine. Since September 1st this year, the Czech Republic and the Republic of Poland will keep control of the airspace of the Slovak Republic. 
Slovakia has said it is ready to send the 11 MiG fighters to Ukraine, whose military has long relied on Soviet-era equipment and which has appealed for more supplies from NATO nations to boost its ability to battle invading Russian forces. Slovak Defense Minister Jaroslav told reporters at an air show yesterday that Bratislava remained ready to send the planes to neighboring Ukraine, but no deal had yet been reached. We are negotiating with our partners and allies not only in Ukraine, but also among NATO and other countries that are trying to find the way to help Ukraine about what we will do next with these planes. I can confirm that there is a political will and it makes sense to help those who need help. I can confirm that the possibility is on the table and once there is an agreement, we will inform you. Under Saturday's deal with Slovakia's neighbors, the Czech Republic and Poland will police its skies from September, while Slovakia awaits delivery of 14 new U.S.-made F-16 fighters. The F-16 deal was signed in 2018, and the jets are due for delivery in 2024. We are in NATO, we are in the European Union, and we support each other. I am convinced that once F-16 planes arrive in Slovakia, 14 F-16 planes, then together with 48 Polish F-16 planes, we can expand the space of common security. When the Czech Republic receives 24 of the F-35 planes, then together with 32 Polish F-35 planes, we can also expand the security space in our union. All of our three countries are connected by the same thing, dependence on Soviet technology. After the start of the war in Ukraine, we are all trying to rearm our armies as soon as possible. Slovakia, with a population of 5.4 million, has already donated an S-300 air defense system, MI-series military helicopters, self-propelled howitzers, and grad multiple rocket launcher rockets. This week, it said it would send 30 tracked infantry fighting BVP-1 vehicles. Western nations and their allies have been boosting military aid to Ukraine with cash, equipment and training in the more than six-month-old conflict with Russia. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration aims to take a giant leap in its renewed lunar ambitions with a debut launch set for tomorrow in Florida of its next-generation mega rocket, the Space Launch System SLS and the Orion crew capsule it is designed to carry. The SLS Orion spacecraft is due for blast-off from the Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, sending the uncrewed capsule around the moon and back to Earth on a six-week test flight called Artemis One. The journey is intended to put the SLS vehicle, considered the world's most complex and powerful rocket ship, through a rigorous stress test of its systems during an actual flight before it is deemed ready to carry astronauts. The SLS represents the biggest new vertical launch system NASA has built since the Saturn V rockets flown during its Apollo moon program of the 1960s and 1970s. We're mindful that this is a test flight, and we're mindful that this is a purposeful stress test of the Orion spacecraft and the space launch system rocket. It is a new creation. It is a new rocket and a new spacecraft to send humans to the moon um, on the very next flight. This is something that has not been done in over 50 years and is incredibly difficult. We will learn a great deal from the uh, Artemis One test flight, and uh, through this experience, we will change and modify anything necessary to, to prepare ourselves for crewed flight on the very next mission. We understand that there's a lot of excitement about this, but the team is very focused. Man, this is getting real. Um, Mike already talked about the atmosphere, and, and I can confirm the atmosphere here is like nothing I've ever experienced before. Um, it is definitely getting real. Uh, the rocket outside on launch pad 39B will be writing the next chapter of, uh, of space exploration and space science. Uh, that chapter will include science all along the way, hand in hand with exploration. And I've recently said to our science community, buckle up everybody, we're going for a ride to the moon. More than a decade in development with years of delays and billions of dollars in cost overruns, the SLS Orion spacecraft so far has cost NASA at least $37 billion, including design, construction, testing, and ground facilities. NASA's Artemis program, named for the goddess who is Apollo's twin sister in ancient Greek mythology, aims to return astronauts to the moon as early as 2025 and establish a long-term lunar colony 
as a stepping stone to even more ambitious future voyages, sending people to Mars. If successful, Artemis I would pave the way to a first crewed SLS Orion mission, an out-and-back flight around the moon designated Artemis II as early as 2024, followed a year or more later by an Artemis III trip to the lunar surface. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Please stay tuned for Poland Daily Weather, Poland Daily Business, and some of our other programs. But from me, it's have a great night. Yeah.